Hello everyone. Today we're going to build this. First I measure out a template to be used for each workpiece. We cut up old scrap from the Harbor Freight workbench and attach it to the spoil board using wood screws. Make sure everything is square, 90 degrees, and etc. Now we take our 1x8 and cut out a 2 foot section for the piece. First we make sure the miter saw settings are correct and that we are at 90 degrees on both axes. Once verified, we cut out a 2 foot section of board. Instead of leaving the sharp corners, I decide to put a 45 degree chamfer along the outside edge of the workpiece. I install the 45 degree chamfer bit into the router table. Because of my cheap setup, it's easier to completely remove this to replace the bit as opposed to trying to work around it. Once we get the bit installed, we're ready to finally start doing the actual cut. So now we go ahead and put it back together. With everything back together, I go ahead and put a 45 degree chamfer cut all the way around the entire front facing edge. Once this was complete, the amount of actual angled surface was, I'd say probably about an eighth of an inch, maybe, maybe three sixteenths of an inch. In the future, I may try some other cuts such as a round over or different scenarios to see which ones look the best. Overall, a basic chamfer cut seems to be one of the, the best looking ones. I had to rescue my sander from the garage where as you can see, it was rather nasty. Using the orbital sander, I went through two different grits, starting off at 220 and finishing up on 320 and I went over all of the exposed surfaces with the exception of the chamfered side. In the past, I've actually completely ground away fine detail, so I decided to not use the orbital to sand that chamfered edge. I did a quick wipe down with denatured alcohol to remove the dust and to help pop up the grain, and did uh, an additional final sand after that. For this project, I went with a chestnut stain hand stirred with a screwdriver like every good redneck does. I wind up applying two coats of stain using a Jersey t-shirt material as an applicator. These are a standard staining rag that you can get at pretty much any of the big box home stores and that's what I used here. While you did see me making some circles, for the most part I did go back and forth with the grain which is the preferred method. I've actually purchased a few different colors of stain. The chestnut is sort of a nice generic color that goes well with paint, uh, specifically white paint, which is what we're going to be using here. But I do have some additional colors that I picked up to try with different signs as I'm going to this project. Now we let the stain dry before we continue. We power up the table and we go ahead and open up our Mach 3 software to run the program that I previously completed off camera after opening up Mach 3, I put the CNC router through its basic calibration sequence to get everything zeroed out. This project is set to start off the middle of the board, so to make sure we have the X, Y, and Z axis zeroed out to that point, I put in one of the sharpest, pointiest bits that I had to use as a sort of dial indicator. Once we found the center of the board, we went ahead and zeroed out the X, Y, and Z axis to go ahead and start the cut. I loaded up the G-code program into Mach 3 and went ahead and tried to start and quickly found out that my original setup failed miserably. Back to the drawing board. Basically, the location that I originally chose for the board to sit was outside of the soft limits that the router could handle. So I needed to kind of move everything a little bit farther up so that everything would be within those limits. So we essentially went in and just removed those two boards, moved them up, and screwed them back down. Once they were screwed down, I remarked where the center of the board should go, went into Mach 3, and re-zeroed out X, Y, and Z for the new home axis so that we could try again. 
I also use my chisel to uh, flatten down the high spots from where I put the screws in earlier. The beauty of a spoil board is designed to be spoiled. After re-zeroing the X, Y, and Z axis, I was able to quickly go back to that location in case I needed to start and do different things with different bits. And once that was zeroed out, we went ahead and removed the pointy bit that we were using just for the sake of finding our center and went ahead and installed the correct bit for this project. In this case, I'm using a 60 degree V bit. After replacing the bit, I went ahead and re-zeroed out the Z axis for the top of the board. While this is still a work in progress, I think there's actually a way I can use the bench top vise that came with the Harbor Freight workbench to actually act as a material holding tool. I don't know how well it's going to work out. It did mostly work in this project, although as you see in a second, I did throw some tape in there as well. To make the later painting of this project easier, we used a Oracle Aura mask, which is basically a stencil vinyl used in cutting machines such as a Cricut. Uh, basically, I cut a piece of this and attached it to the board. While attaching it, I used the included little paddle to smooth everything down to ensure that there was a good seal between the aura mask and the project board itself. As mentioned earlier, I then used painter's tape to hold each end down. The vise held the piece steady for the most part, but the tape was to kind of help hold it flush to the board. And with that complete, now we start cutting. With the cut complete, we moved the gantry back out of the way, went ahead and peeled off the tape and got it ready for some painting. There was some spots that didn't look as well as I would like, so I used my chisel to try to clean those up a little bit. Since this was a practice run, I didn't worry about them too much and it could have looked better, but I did go ahead and try to clean it up just a little. The noise stop. It's 99% there. So one thing I did is that I bought a generic bit. Well, not a totally generic, but it was a light white side brand. And I don't know if they had anything for the uh, Vectric, so I used an Amana bit, which meant there's some spots well, that could be cleaner, but I chiseled them out manually a little bit, just cleaning, cleaning it up manually. And I'm probably going to call it good enough and paint it. See how it was shallow here and deeper here? That's what I was talking about with the V cut. The wider the lettering is, the deeper the bit has to go. And part of that is it, the geometry it thought my bit was may not be as good as it would have thought it was. So I think that's where we actually got to, the E's are barely there. Mm. 
I mean, all in all, not bad at all. I think it's a successful first pass. But I think I need to play with my bits a little bit. So this is acrylic. Yes. That's what I use for my, uh, what do you call it? I'm trying to think of any of the paint, the white paint I have is also acrylic. Squirt and wipe stuff. One word down. And again, I don't know how much I'm going to worry about this first run. Turn this off and we'll be back. Okay, so overall, everything went pretty well. This was a test run. As you can see, there are a lot of problems with the way the bit geometry went into things. It wasn't as clean as we would have liked it to be. But I was not using the correct bit in Aspire. I was actually just using a random bit. I've since downloaded the actual ones for the White House bits. So we'll see if it gets a little bit better on the next build.